Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I'm Reverend Melissa Gall, and I'm here with you again this morning, and I'm very excited to be back. I've not participated in this favorite hymn sing before in this way. I can only envision Carol at home practicing the whole hymnal. (laughs) I'm jealous that you can just sight read all of that. (laughs) So we want to welcome all visitors and guests. We're pleased that you're worshiping with us again today. We pray that the joy of Christ will fill you as we worship together. There are friendship paths at the ends of each pew. We ask that you would fill those out, pass them along the pew, and then back to the center so that we know who's here with us. All are invited downstairs following worship today for coffee and fellowship. Today's KDIO radio broadcast is sponsored in memory of Mark Block by Terry, Mark II, Jennifer, Matt, and their families. Today's lector is Lois Bergeson. I thank you for being here. Gives me a little bit of a break in the service. And for all the men today on Father's Day, whether you're a father, a father at heart, trying to be a father, or having a difficult day, we know that these days can be filled with joy and they can be a little bit tough sometimes. But we want you to accept a candy bar treat on behalf of the Evangelism Board as you leave the service today. This week, attending Green Lake Bible Camp are Poppy, Arlie, Maisie, and Tessa. So please add those youth to your prayers to have a safe and inspirational time this week. Camp has been one of the most formational places and experiences in my life, and so I pray that they have just the best week as well. Our first summer hymn sing at Fairway View is this week. I have to admit, when I read that, I thought it said VFW, so I'm glad I looked at those letters again, but... Hey, we can do it wherever, right? <laughs> Join us this in the Orpheum this Wednesday at 1.30 for some great singing fun. Next Sunday, our annual election meeting will take place after church. Please be sure to come to vote on the new council members, get an update on the call process, and also to discuss whether or not we want to continue broadcasting our services on KDIO. Again, we'll continue the favorite hymns throughout the service in different places. Make sure you're picking out of the red hymnal that you know the number and the name so that everybody can get on the same page, literally and figuratively. And I would invite you to check your bulletins for more announcements. Are there any that I haven't mentioned that should be lifted up for the good of the group? Yes. Very good. So planning for Bible school, it went great. How many kids did you have? 84. Oh my gosh, 84 in the 80s. Perfect. That's wonderful. Any other announcements to be lifted up today? Okay, so I would invite you to stand as you feel so called and join in our greeting and passing of the peace. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take some time to share the peace of Christ with those around you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding 
rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is All Are Welcome, verses 1, 3, and 5. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Now is that time. It feels like a game show a little bit. I feel like <laughs> kind of excited up here. Um, is there a favorite hymn for our hymn of praise? 742. 742. Oh, good one. Very good. 742, what a friend we have in Jesus. And two verses, is that right? Perfect.
Please join with for our prayer of the day. O oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. The reading can be found beginning on page 508 of the Old Testament in our Pew Bibles. Tree imagery is used in a messianic prophecy to tell how the Lord will choose someone from Judah's royal family, the cedar tree, to reign over all creation. This tree will be planted on Mount Zion, the location of the Holy Temple. A reading from Ezekiel, the 17th chapter, beginning with the 22nd verse. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of the young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it, in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. The Lord has spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 92 is found in the red hymnal between the readings and the hymns, and we will read responsively by verse. A reading from the Psalms, the 92nd chapter, beginning with the first verse. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High. To herald your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. On the psaltery and the lyre and to the melody of the harp. For you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the works of your hands. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent. That they may show how upright the Lord is, my rock in whom there is no injustice. The word of the Lord. This reading can be found beginning on page 138 of the New Testament in the Pew Bibles. Paul encourages believers to live by faith and not by sight. We do not consider Jesus from a human perspective, but through the eyes of faith, believing that he died for all and was raised. All who are in Christ are now in God's new creation. A reading from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, beginning with the sixth verse. So we are always confident, 
Even though we know that we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others But we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to our consciences, that we are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearances and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died, and he died for all, so those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we are to regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation Everything old has passed away, and everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Are there children that would come forward this morning? morning. I'm glad you all came up because otherwise this might be kind of hard. Come scoot this way, will you? How are you all? On summer vacation now, finally, huh? Yes. Have you had a whole month of break yet? No. We in Millbank have been on for a month now and it's like, where did the month go? I can't even believe it. Okay, so I have something that I brought with today. I went shopping. Okay. Can you tell what that says on there? Mustard. mustard seed. I learned a lot about mustard this week. Do you all like mustard? Yeah. Do you? No. It's kind of, you, you either like it or you don't. I'm not really a fan. I like honey mustard, like for dipping, right? But these are, from the grocery store, these are mustard seeds. Have you ever seen those before? Yeah. Sometimes when you eat pickles... There's mustard seeds in there to help give it flavor and all of that. My kids were very worried that I was going to give everyone one of these and what a mess that would make. And I said, no, we're not opening this bag because that seems dangerous, right? So mustard seed can be used, it says, in pickling, in sausage making, or for boiling vegetables such as cabbage. Have you all used mustard seed before? If you're canners or, yeah? Okay. So look at how tiny those little seeds are. Come over here and look at this. Do you see how little those are? Yes. Now, I don't know what would happen if we crushed one open because, again, the bag has to stay sealed. But these little seeds grow into big, bushy plants. Is it weird that something this little can grow something so big? I mean, have you ever planted a a flower before? And they start off as teeny tiny little seeds. Yeah. And then they grow and grow and grow. And sometimes they become just a little flower, right? But sometimes 
What makes trees grow? Little teeny tiny seeds are what make a huge tree grow, right? Isn't that crazy to think about? That something so little can make something so big grow? Have you ever really thought about that? You're all like, no, we don't think about these things. You have, okay. So today in our scripture, we're going to hear about mustard seeds. Like these same things were around way, way, way back when. Like when Jesus was around. Isn't that cr- That's kind of crazy to think about too, isn't it? That we have the same stuff that Jesus had when he was on the earth. But you're going to hear about these little seeds and how they grow into the big bush. And actually, in the desert areas, so like where Jesus would have been living, they can actually grow to tree size. I never knew that. I thought they just grew into like a bush size. But they could grow with that environment into big trees. Not a big tree like we would think of, like a maple or an oak tree. But they grow into a big tree rather than a bush. But we are reminded in our scripture that if we have faith the size of one of these, so just looking at one of them, if we have faith that size, that's faith. And God can do stuff with that. God can work all the things that God does with just one of those. Isn't that amazing? That we just have to have faith the size of a mustard seed. But what if we had bigger faith than a mustard seed? Because sometimes all we can figure out is faith of a must this size, right? Like sometimes we're like, ooh, I don't know about this, but I can have a little eensy weensy bit of faith, right? But sometimes we have full, big, tree size faith and stuff, don't we? Yeah, yeah. So I should have done, you know, if we were doing the hymn, the favorite hymns, I should have said, had you guess how many are in here? <laughs> Can you imagine counting all of those? I have, I have no concept of how many is in here. I'm terrible at that. But wouldn't that have been funny? Oh, you're going to start counting? <laughs> so would you all pray with me today? I'll give you a line and then I'll have you repeat it. Does that work? Okay. Dear God, Dear God we give thanks. For Jesus Jesus. and his parables parables. to us. us. God, help us us. to have faith, faith. even the size of a mustard seed. seed. Guide us us. and protect us us. as we go in our week. week. Amen. Amen. Should we pass these around, do you think, so that everybody can see them? Are you scared they're going to open the bag? Do we have to make them pinky promise they won't open it? (laughs) I think let's pass it around. Do you want to start it in your row? Because you're kind of up front, aren't you? Yeah. So pass that around during the sermon and during the rest of the service. Will you collect it back when when it gets back to the front? Will you be in charge of that bag? And you, I, I know you're not going to open it, are you? You're not going to open it. Because <laughs> you don't want to have to clean it up, do you? <laughs> okay, do we have another favorite hymn? 75. Oh, that was two sevens and something after that. What did I hear over here? 732. 732, and what's the hymn of that? 732, Borning Cry. Do you have that one? Yeah. Okay. 
Please stand as you are able as we welcome the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter, beginning with the 26th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus frequently uses parables to teach ordinary people as they are able to hear and understand. Images of sowing and growing show the vitality of God's kingdom. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. (laughs) So as I was thinking about the scripture today, I remembered a lesson in elementary school where each of us students was given a clear plastic cup, a bit of dirt, and a flower seed. Each of my classmates and I planted our own seed. We watered the seed. We found the window with the best sunlight. And then we waited. It seemed like the wait for the plant to start growing took forever even though we each continued to water and nurture and care for that soon-to-be flower. The flower finally grew, poking out through the dirt and flourishing into the flower that we each knew we had been waiting so patiently, or not so patiently, for. Then about 10 years ago, the office I was working in received an Easter garden in a pot. You know, those flower pots that contain three or four or five different varieties of spring flowers, and they all grow together and they smell so good. So we got one of those, and the day the potted garden was delivered, only the very start of the plants were peeking through the dirt. There was about two inches just of green stems poking through. I commented to my office colleagues that we should take a picture each day at about the same time to see what had changed from day to day in the flowers. So I snapped the first picture and went to a meeting that I had scheduled in the office that afternoon. And to my surprise, when I came out of the meeting about an hour later, the flowers had grown, no joke, about an inch. They had gotten huge while I was in this meeting. There was no need to even wait a day to take new pictures because they were growing so much faster than I had expected them to. And then just this week, one of my husband's cousins posted on social media about the fun that she and her husband are having this summer in their yard. Because the two of them moved into a new house over the winter, and winter, they live in Bismarck, so winter in Bismarck is winter here too, right? So they have no idea what's planted in their yard or what kind of trees will bloom. And so each day they wake up to a surprise. Something new has bloomed or has shown its colors for the first time. And it's like a surprise every morning for them. Now all three of those examples, those are how planting and growing goes, isn't it? Sometimes the flowers or plants bloom quickly. Sometimes they seem to slowly make their way up through the dirt. And still other times, 
What grows is maybe just a surprise. We have no idea what's coming up. But we plant and we water and we nurture and we tend to the seeds that we want to grow. But do we do that for our faith as well? Isn't our faith sometimes like those plants that we wait to grow? Sometimes it grows way slower than we think it should. Or it appears faster and we kind of surprise ourselves that we believe or have faith in something so quickly. Now today's scripture passage includes two parables told by Jesus. And parables we know are something that he often uses to describe the kingdom of God. It's through the use of those parables that Jesus recognizes and seeks to stimulate his audience's imagination so that they might perceive the power and the presence of God in new but also immediate ways. Jesus uses parables to say, you count because God is in your life. Your life and your witness have energy and value because God has filled you with gifts. So we start today's scripture passage by reading the parable of the growing seed. Jesus tells the gathered disciples, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. Now this first parable, I think, is one that is often overlooked, because we go straight to the second one. But in this first parable, Jesus likens the kingdom of God to a type of plant familiar to gardeners or farmers. The gardener can put the seed in the ground and can go through the steps of watering and feeding the plant. But the farmer or gardener cannot control the actual process of sprouting and growing, no matter how much we will that to happen. In fact, the gardener has so little to do with making the seed grow that in the first parable, we're told the gardener sleeps through the process of sprouting and maturation. This parable emphasizes that the kingdom of God is dependent upon God's grace. But why is Jesus telling us this? Is it to emphasize that all is not dependent upon us? Because sometimes we get caught up in that, don't we? Is Jesus urging us to have the patience of a farmer? In this parable, there is no plot twist, like we find in many parables, only a recognition of this everyday miracle. For worshipers who are working tirelessly to take part in God's healing work, this is a holy reminder that not all work is ours to do. We have an invitation here to keep the Sabbath while trusting that God's work continues even while we sleep or rest. The world needs the work that we have to offer, which is why we need to be rooted and rested in the power of God's creative love. But the kingdom of heaven is like a seed that is scattered on the ground, sprouting and growing to fullness on its own. One of my favorite commentaries to use had this to say about the first parable. It said, Intimacy with Christ grows in us as certainly and as effortlessly as seeds grow. We have so little to do with Christ's nearness to us that we can just go to sleep and rest. In fact, it says it might be better if we did sleep through the whole thing snug and safe, resting like babies in our mother's arms. Because this trust is so deep that we can rest without anxiety and that's much more useful than fussing over the little seed, than fussing over those little, little details. Because we tend to douse things with pesticide and repot it and cluck anxiously over the amount of sun that the plant has. But the kingdom of God is like this restful trust. It's not like the frenetic busyness of works righteousness, because that's a slippery slope, isn't it? And it is not like the anxious attachment 
to particular positions, moral or ethical or doctrinal even, defending which we gladly expend all of our energy. So in case we didn't quite get the message with the first parable, Jesus goes on to offer us a second one. Mark 4, 30 through 32 reads, He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. The kingdom of God, it says, is like a mustard seed, which, though incredibly small, grows into a bush so large and lush that birds can make nests in its shade. Now Mark doesn't give us a caution or a rebuke, that we have to have the faith the size of a mustard seed. Instead, though, plain and simple, Mark's words are about the kingdom that provides saving space that's way beyond our imagining. This parable is not about us, but it is about the grace of God. There are clues in the plant that grows so large from such a small seed that we read and marvel that even birds come to nest in the shade of the spacious dwelling that is found in the seed's tree or bush that grows. And this is how the reign of God is and will continue to be. We don't fully understand how the sprouting and the growing of such a reality, that kingdom of God that is, and is also yet to come. We can't fully understand how that reality could come to be. And yet, it becomes a harvest of life. And the tree from the seed spreads out branches to be a place of rest and song and abundance. So if we are a people of mustard seed-sized faith, and God is a God of mountain-moving ability, how much more could we recognize God's actions if we had the faith the size of the tree that grows from the, from the seed? God moves mountains at our faith that is the size of a mustard seed, just that tiny little seed. What more could we do together with God's help, with big audacious faith because being busy makes a lot of sense to us doesn't it it fits with our normal way of being human and I will admit I am one of those people I have a very hard time relaxing I have a very hard time resting and doing one thing at a time but we achieve all sorts of good by working hard and committing ourselves to our values, right? We have well-run offices then. We get good grades. We find the politicians of our choice. We get svelte figures sometimes. That's a little harder than others. We have neatly trimmed lawns. We have clean dishes and windows. And these are mostly reasonable things. And certainly nothing useful would happen if we did not work for those things, or if we remained indifferent to moral or political or, again, doctrinal issues. But the harvest will come without us having to work for it, because God adores us, and it is this love that is the power of growth. I have a friend who plants her garden and waters it that first day, and then she says, I let God water it the rest of the growing season. It just It's going to do what it's going to do. And it is this love that transforms the tiniest and most powerless-looking seed into a lush bush that gives rest and shade to even the singing birds, just as it transforms our tiny, incomprehensible awareness of God into a magnificent radiance in which we ourselves 
and all the creatures of the earth can rest. Today's passage ends by saying that Jesus spoke the word only in parables to the crowd as they were able to hear it, but then he explained everything to his disciples. But if we are tempted to think that the disciples received some sort of inside track that saved them from the pain and the confusion of the gospel, we learn in the next story of Mark that they were not saved from any pain or confusion. Because as soon as we learn that everything is explained in private to the disciples, we learn how useful this was to them. The next story in Mark that I'm talking about is when they're on a boat and a storm comes up. They are terrified. On the verge of drowning, they wake up Jesus because, remember, he was sleeping in the bottom of the boat, kind of like that gardener that we talked about. He's sleeping through this storm, and he cannot understand why they are afraid. And he says, weren't you supposed to be having faith? Remember that conversation from back there in the crowd? And then I explained to you in private, too. To Jesus, their fear is incomprehensible. But to them, Jesus' calm is incomprehensible, right? They're like, aren't you going to freak out like us, too? And he doesn't. God will not fail to fulfill the promise of salvation. It is already coming to be in this world, just like the seed sown in the earth or the remarkable growth of the tree from the mustard seed, silently and yet powerfully coming to be. The growth of faith is a similar mystery. We can do the best we can to provide good soil in the form in our lives of teachers and mentors and friends and parents and pastors. Because Jesus reminds us that faith is a gift which comes to us from God. We cannot control it in ourselves. We cannot control it in others. But we can plant, we can water, and then we can rest and wake until that plant grows. And in the end, it is God who brings the growth and the Holy Spirit who gives us faith. As people of God, we are called to be good soil. As people of God, we are called to trust that God will do what we cannot. Faith will grow. The church will flourish. Not because of our grand schemes and our plans, but because God will have it no other way. So I ask, who can we go and be good soil for today? What situations in our lives need a little extra water or some sunlight? What situations or relationships or areas in our lives do we currently give no faith to, but could use just an eensy bit of faith, like the size of that mustard seed? Let us go out and live out our faith, planting seeds of the good news, trusting in the one who created us to continue nurturing and growing our faith and that of those around us. Amen. Would you pray with me? Gracious and holy God, we give thanks to you for the beauty that is this earth you've created. We give thanks that you have given us your son in order to save and that you have helped us have faith even if it's the teeny tiniest faith the size of a little seed God help that to grow into a big faith where we can see and experience all of the joy that you provide in our lives In your holy name we pray. Amen. At this time, I invite you to stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and we're going to do things a little out of order here because we need our next hymn to sing during our offertory. So is there another? I know there was a number back here that I missed earlier, 7-something. Okay, 785. Say the name one more time. When peace, like a river. when peace like a river. And at this time, we ask that the ushers would collect and present our offering as we sing this next favorite hymn. <laughs> Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Please join me in a time of intercessory prayer. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Each prayer petition ends with merciful God, and your response is, receive our prayer. God, nourish your faithful people through gifts of word and worship. Guide the church in listening to and interpreting your message of grace for this time and place in history. In your wisdom, lead us in expanding the reach of your love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Nature sings your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Sustain the holy rhythms of creation days and seasons, hibernation and activity, phases of the moon and tides of the sea. 
Let these patterns assure us of your constancy. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You raise the lowly and humble, those in regard. Raise up all who are victims of marginalization, discrimination, and hate. As we anticipate Juneteenth, banish white supremacy and bigotry from the hearts of your people and remove the inclination toward anger and violence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Tend to all who journey by faith and who wait with patience for the fulfillment of your healing promises, especially Carol, Arlen, Gail, Harris, Beth, Brandy, Monty, Paul, Rosie, Larry, Natalie, McCoy, Janice, David, and Jerry. At Fairway View Neighborhoods, Janet, Ricky, Arvilla, Adeline, Ruth, Jim, Vivian, Roger, and Mary Lou in Madison. We pray for all of our military who are deployed to areas of conflict, especially Alexander Johnson and those that we hold dear in our hearts. Grant perseverance to people doing physical and occupational therapy, people living with mobility concerns, and people who face chronic pain. Merciful God, receive our prayer. As you have loved us, so let us love one another. Empower fathers, stepfathers, grandfathers, adoptive fathers, and chosen fathers to embody this gift of love for their children. Where these relationships are strained or broken, God, bring your comfort and peace. Merciful God, receive our prayers. With gratitude, we remember the Emmanuel Nine martyrs and all the saints who are now at home with you. Plant seeds of their wisdom and witness in our hearts that we grow in faith until you, we join them in your heavenly dwelling. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us. Be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. We will. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn today is Soon and Very Soon.